WEMF. Welcome. Young Jerks. Big, big, big show. That's right here on WEMFradio.com. Welcome. Welcome. We got one hour, so we're going to get right to it this week. Speed of sound. Speed of sound. That's right. We got uh, <laughs> the show uh, just been doing good. So many so, so many fronts we could be covering because we have one hour a week, but we have many irons going. Many oh, so stories. Many. So many. And many, much news and, and much action and much things happening. Some things we can talk about, some things we cannot. Uh, certain things we haven't talked about yet, and we will be talking about a, new, a lot of new things related to uh, the Young Jerks, what we do here, WEMF Radio. I dig Boston as well, my riding in Dig Boston. And what, Let's get right to it. Why don't we get right to it? Your Let's name is? In. I'm Frank Capone, and... Uh we got Mike Hand here. Yeah, let's hear it for ourselves this week. Hey, let's we hear clap it for everyone. <laughs> and I, actually, I want to, uh, when we say that, we're really thanking you out there. Because, that's right. Uh, man, you know, I've been, I, you know, I had a lot of stuff that's gone on last months and weeks, and since October 6th, we lost Michael Malta, and it's just been hard. And you guys have been doing it for us. I swear to God, like, our, everything that we do. It's because the community sport. We went out last night. We felt it. We we really did feel it. Yeah, I had a, had a great time last night at the uh, Battle for the Rally Finals. And uh, Chris got up Foy. on stage with yeah. uh, Chris Foy. And, awesome. Uh, you know, all the all the peoples were out. It was good to see everybody. Mass can normal. That's right. Kara Crab Burnham looking awesome. She's she's oh man, I love it. Mass can normal. This new new. You know, we. I used to be a big part of that. I still work with them. Help them out big part of it uh it's nice to see these younger people really running it doing all the work doing a great job too doing a great job it was fun last night lots of people were there you know they had an awesome crowd really good bands we spoke yep well mike spoke yeah i spoke for you mike was hogging the the you you got to be a judge i did i was a judge and we both got like you know vip access it was like we were treated very well by mask and appreciated and we were both announced on the stage we promoted emf young young jerks uh dig boston mask and and then the big moment, because it was like, we were going to get you and speak in, but there's literally no moment after we raise somebody's name. Isn't that really Yeah, no, happened? and, and uh, it was really cool that... Uh, I didn't even know. get to talk about Masked no, as much as I wanted to, because yeah. the name comes up, and then, what's the name? What well, it? obviously, you know, it said uh, KOP, and yeah. so the place just broke out in... Uh, Really awesome KOP chant, so... It was. Memory K-O-P. still lives on, you know, still K-O-P. fighting. KOP. It was great. KOP. Yeah, it was nice, so... And the Freedom Rally's coming up. Oh, yeah. There's going to be more of that. That Two was like days. a preview last night. That was the battle for the rally. This is a big mass can event that they Those raised money DS. for to see who's going to play the Freedom Rally. Mm-hmm. And we got to speak last night at the Middle East downstairs. It was a great show. We met a lot of new people. And uh, we're coming up on the Freedom Rally. We're both speaking That's and right. planning big things. I've got a big thing going on on Saturday at the Freedom Rally in the main stage where I'll be speaking and doing some major things with the Vermin Supreme. Yeah, and uh, Diane Russell. Diane also. Russell. And the guys from High Times. Ooh. And uh, the guys from Normal and... Gonna get lifted. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And Farone from The Dig. Oh, Farone's gonna be there, too. Yeah. Very I nice. think he's on the main stage Saturday. Always a too. good time, the Freedom Rally. You know, and let's 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 see if... Um, let's see, we've got, what, about three weeks now until the four weeks until the... Or just about three weeks? The no, Freedom it's rally? like two weeks. Dude. Two weeks. Not this... Not oh. ne- next Saturday, the Saturday after. We should be expecting an injunction any time be now huge. the city of Boston. Oh, that's what I'm worried about. We watch it every day. I wrote a column that's coming out in Dig Boston about the Freedom Rally. It's a great column, but one of the, the disclaimers is like, you know... Any time that could be an injunction, but expect us to win. Oh, every time you've won. Yeah, so it's no matter what lost, you hear in the ever. press from now in the Freedom Rally about it being canceled, if the city of Boston tries anything again for the fifth time, we're going to win no matter what. We're going to have the rally. Even if we lost the permit in court, we'll which would show happen, up. We'd still show <laughs> up. We're still going to show up. There just won't be a stage. Yeah. Sorry, guys. And we'll still do stuff. No falafel. <laughs> but. And, and there will still be speeches, just like we did last year on 420, didn't of we? Of course. Yeah, no. That's And they tried to shut us down last year. we still year. spoke. And, um, you know, everyone rallied up, and, and we had an uh, amazing, you know, memorable um, event uh, with people from all around the country, activists from all around the country, you know, um, and so it was, big, it was it, awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. And, you know, we got to be quick today, but big shout Speed out to masscan.org. Freedom Rally is coming up. I highly recommend highly that people get involved, support Mass Can, check it out. 
check out their website. If you support legalization, if you support medical patients, go ahead and do it. We, we got a campaign. We're going to legalize it in 2016 in Massachusetts. We got a lot going in the studio. We have a special guest that we haven't even mentioned yet. Surely do. We're not going to mention it yet. All right. Because what we're going to do first and foremost <laughs> is Rob Kaufman's here behind the board. We're very happy he's here. We hey, Rob. Hey. What's up? How you doing? The Good. dude. The dude. In the house. He's looking good, too. He's Man like making flesh. me feel like I should have shaved today. I was thinking about it. I didn't. Now I'm looking at him. He's yeah. like, wow, look at him. He's you got to keep it nice and trim for the radio. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Isn't that this, like the, the the thing about radio? You really don't have to try like yeah. that way. But I'm sitting here in my boxers right now. Yeah. I'm wearing a free WEMF shirt that I got. But you this look is my good. wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I want to congratulate you on trying, Rob. Thanks. Thank you. So, we have the Young Jerks, and uh, we, we get something kind of huge happened to me today on Twitter, which is weird, but not that weird. Um, we're going to talk about someone jeered me, someone, and a big-time person jeered me, and uh, even kind of swore at me and called me a name. He called you an effing moron. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. First, we're going to go to the good news. We'll call it chairs and jeers, right? Because we haven't even mentioned today. 617-500-7100 is the number. We won! We did. If you don't know, I think a lot of people do know. Of course they know. They're shopping there right now. Yeah. <laughs> Market Basket. We've been supporting all these employees. They've been calling in the show. Some of them, it's heartbreaking. They lost their jobs over the last few weeks. Um, Dan, the man who's called in several times, he might be calling in today. He's got his job back. That's he started awesome. working you know? again. And, um, and that just goes to show, you know, exactly what, what you can accomplish when you hold your ground, you know. All those people that said, all those people should just go back to work and keep the company functioning, and then they can figure it out. Well, no. no they got the market happen. basket they wanted. Exactly. And it's back, and it's going to be huge, and can't wait to shop there. And they're, which I, I feel very good about this, they're thanking us. They, they're personally contacting us, sending us pictures, thanking us. They can't wait to meet us in person at the stores. Um, so many of them. I mean, we had Cindy... Uh, that store manager, that you know, store director, she mm -hmm. called in. She was amazing. But we've had part timers. We've had all sorts of people that have worked at Market Basket 20, 30, 40 years. Both shows, our show, The Young Jerks, and Carmelita's show coming up after. Um, it, it's been amazing. And one of them that was posted on my page that it, it just, man. It's I had some, you know, it, it's not easy lately for me sometimes. And. It's all worth it. Everything going in the right direction personally. And I know people, you know, sometimes it's like, who gives a crap about you, Mike Can? But it's just one of those things. Like today for our show, you know, Generic Clay, I read it last night, and it just had me tears in my eyes. Like, you know, this woman, young woman, uh, she was fighting for a job, and she, she, she posted and thanked us. The, uh, basically what she said, this is a reinstated market basket worker. It's very humbling reading how many people appreciate uh, market basket. Thank you all the media for keeping our movement vocal on all levels. Special thanks to the Concord, Monker, uh, Concord Monitor, the Young Jerks, Mike Crawford, Greg and the Morning Buzz, you know that radio station, Twitter and Facebook for keeping us in the public eye. Most of all, thanks for rooting for the little guy. Hear us roar. Hashtag Demolas. Hashtag ATD. I mean, just amazing, you know? She's working. She's back working, and she's thanking us. And uh, no, thank you, Janera. I mean, thank you. You got the word out. You, you know, took advantage awesome. of what we are offering, and that's all we wanted to do. We wanted to get your voice out, and you've you've been amazing. You're an amazing lady, and um, and uh, you deserve to be back at work in Market Basket. And we're very excited to be shopping there. And uh, thank you. And uh, we should introduce our guest, and because I think he might have something to say about the hate mail coming up, also that I got. And it's really not hate mail. We're going to be very nice to this person, um, but we should introduce our guest because I think he might have something to weigh in. He's a little more conservative than maybe some of our audience, maybe in some respects. But in a lot of respects, I, I I'm conservative, so uh, he's we, just fooling you. He's like a teddy bear. Yeah, he and he's a really nice guy. He's very <laughs> slick. He's very like. You know, he, he you can't help but not to like him. It's like someone like Carmelita hates anyone who's uh, left of right or right of left, whatever that is. She's not very conservative. She doesn't like conservative. Certainly not. And I think she would like Brad. His name is Brad Marston. He's a uh, consultant in Massachusetts um, for conservative campaigns, would you say, Brad? Well, we also work for Republicans. Excellent. <laughs> and, uh, so and you're, you're a Republican in most respects. Absolutely. I mean, I'm chairman of my ward committee. I'm treasurer of the Boston Republican City Committee. Um, I sort of 
you know, but I really came on the political scene four or five years ago with the Tea Party movement. So I have sort of, you know, feet in both uh, uh, both camps. I, I do want to just mention Market Basket. Yes. I, that it's, I mean, they, Demula Supermarkets was actually a client of mine years ago, my first job out of college. But seeing what happened and seeing what the family was doing to each other and to their employees and the fact that the employees got behind Arthur T is a teachable moment for entrepreneurs and the corporate culture that, you know what, you can you can pay your people a little bit better. You can make your people feel important. You can build that loyalty through your employers or employees that then attracts the the loyalty of the customers. And so I just I'm delighted the way. Uh, this has turned out awesome. And uh, as a Republican, did you were you happy with the politician response in the Republican Party? Some of the candidates, did you think that some of them could have been more forceful sooner? Um, let's talk about like the governor's response, the attorney general's response, Charlie Baker's response. Can you give us some? I know you're you're all about these local politics. You know these folks. Some of them, um, quick responses on those three at least. Yeah, um, I didn't see Charlie's. Um, I, in these kind of disputes, when no laws are being broken, I don't know why government officials are weighing in. And if it was September of 2015 and we weren't 10 and or 9 and 30-something days out from an election, I don't think any of them would have said anything. I think there's some truth to that last part of the statement, but I don't think... The other part is quite right because there's so many jobs at stake. These are working class people. We all agree that they're. We want to support them, even the governor, even you know. And I don't think it cost anything for the governor. I think he did a really good job. I think he was came a little too late to the party, but in the end, he was there. He did a good job, and he helped. I think. And I think what the governor could do in the situation, the attorney general, it's the press, it's the bully pulpit, and that's free for them. All they got to do is call a conference or when they're speaking, answer the question on market basket, and that's what they did. And the governor took a call from some members of the board and helped. Bring the two sides together, it sounded like. Well, so, I, think, I think he I think, explained you know, to him that good. they were destroying what they were exactly. fighting over. Yeah. It's like, guys, if you yeah. don't solve this, no one's going yeah. to pay you a dollar. And it's like sometimes you don't even need yeah. and, and, and it's almost like sometimes you don't even need to be the governor to say that. We were all saying that, but because he's the governor, maybe they'll listen to him. And I think in that case, they did, which is, you know, it's just like this other thing we're going to bring up the jer. It's like the person that jared me. I'm going to hear him out because of who he is. I got to admit, you know, it's like uh, Tom Shattuck. I don't know if anyone knows this guy. Well, I think a lot of people do, especially if you're a conservative in Massachusetts, if you're listening to this show. But if you're one of our more liberal, progressive, maybe pirate party, maybe you don't know, but you will soon. Uh, at Tom Shattuck, it's S-H-A-T-T-U-C-K. Uh, this guy, I'm going to call him, you know, some almost like a legend. He's, he's very renowned, very accomplished. I like him. I'm going to just put it out that way. Uh, Herald Radio, he works over there. He, I think he's the main boss. He's the big wig over there. He used to work at RKO with Howie Carr. Um, I have been hammering the Herald for months. I've almost been trolling them, all right? I've been doing like what Rob Kaufman does in a way. They're pretty um, easy to troll. Yeah, and I've been doing it a straight way in a lot of respects with the we thing through Dig Boston professionally. But then in the comments section and on Twitter, I mean, even nastier. <laughs> I, I got to admit it. Like, you know, like I'm just <laughs> and on the show because it's so easy, you know. But in some respects, I love Herald Radio and I like Tom Shattuck and I like what he's trying to do. So what happened today is uh, Eddie Edelman got hired at Herald Radio. And I don't know if. You know, I think a lot of people do know who Eddie Edelman is, but if you don't, I'm going to have to explain just to make sure. He's a former sports guy, been doing radio in this town for a long time, at some of these other stations, EEI, I believe, for a long time. But he's someone my grandfather loved. He, my, you know, he, he I was being a little kid driving around you know, with my grandfather and listening to it all the yeah. time. And he is very, he can be entertaining. You know, I was ragging on him, saying he's not that entertaining and all this, but it's kind of a retread, number one, is my issue. But more of the fact is he basically got called out by Boston.com recently for some of his Twitter posts. Post, which were really kind of over the line. Rob Kaufman will probably be upset for me for saying this, but I, I went after somebody for their Twitter posts, Rob. 
who who got a show. And it wasn't really about that, though. It's not about even even though I made it about that. I just want a reaction. And really, what it's about is I just got sick of seeing the Herald Radio go in this direction. What did he say? It don't even matter. He had a couple of gems. Um, hold yeah. on, I'll pull one up. Continue. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it's not even it's not intelligence stuff. Because nothing dies like Rob, on if you Twitter. say something <laughs> this is the difference. This is the difference. If you say something that's inappropriate, that gets like a left wing liberal like Karma Leader upset. Yeah. Usually I can back you because it'll be somewhat funny or intelligent or unusual. His ain't. Like his day is past. You know, and that's my problem with Harold Radio. It's like I love that show, that morning show. I went after it in Dig Boston about the marijuana thing and not questioning one of the candidates too much. But that's my issue, marijuana. Of course, I'm going to be ultra critical. <laughs> but I like that uh, morning show with uh, Hillary Chabot and uh, uh, Jacqueline. Um, oh, I'm escaping my name. Uh, uh, you know her. About... She's a columnist. You know Jacqueline? Oh, uh, Jacqueline uh, Cashman. Cashman. They have a good show. Oh, yeah. Now I know it. Yeah. I, I really do like that show. And I do like, um, you know, I do also like even uh, Battenfeld, even though he's kind of a, you know, I don't really like him. But you know, he's, I could listen to it. Howie Carr, same way. Howie Carr is entertaining, even though I think he's a, I'll call him out. It's kind of like, you know how you have family that you kind of like, you support, but you give them a hard time about that one issue you don't agree with? Oh, yeah. It's like cops I know. That. Some cops I'm friend with, but they'll give me the hard time all the time about being my can. That's what we have. You know, and I'll give them a hard time about busting people and ruining them over weed. You know what I mean? But we're friends, so it's not, that's almost the way I feel about Harold Radio at this point. So, I just uh, want to get that out there, real gem, because real quick. Cause after oh, yeah, yeah I'd after like to hear what he yeah, so after Tom Shattuck <laughs> said that to me, I don't know if I really said no. I haven't said what he said. Okay, <clears throat> Tom Shattuck. After I went after them, I went after uh, his boy that he just signed, his new, uh, you know, Eddie Endelman. He says uh, he, he quotes Mike Boss, Mike Can Boston. He says they talked about hot dogs and food trucks. I think he's talking about Eddie. Maybe he's talking about Eddie's kids. I'm not even sure about that. But he says, in response to all my criticism, I think on Twitter and maybe even over over the last months, he says, "Lighten up, you fucking moron." <laughs> I'm not supposed to swear on the station, but I just did because it's Tom Shattuck. This guy is a legend in radio, basically. Yeah. I'd and, like to know what the tweets that he said though that you were. Uh... You got to see it. I'm basically going after him. I'm calling his guy. Like, what did I say, Frank? I said he was, uh, oh, I think I have it. Uh, I said something about Andelman. Uh, he's the focus of questionable racist homo tweet, homophobic <laughs> tweets or something like that. Like, okay. this, no, I basically said, like, your whole focus is, like, the Howie Carr thing. Now you're trying to even go, like, lower brow than Howie. Howie at least is intelligent. He has education. Like, it's like <clears throat> my whole point about the Herald Radio, and this is where I want to wrap it up with this. Is that I'm disappointed. They got this great thing they're doing, which I like. They 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 started this thing. They're doing political. It's awesome, and people want to listen to it. Great, but why aren't you looking at some of the younger talent in the city, this area? Even like someone like uh, state. Oh, I'm going to name some of the people instead of hiring Adley Addie Andelman. Why aren't you hiring the guy sitting to the left of me, Brad Marston? Why aren't you hiring uh, State Senator Bob Headland? How about our boy N.A. Poe, who's on fire? If you can get his, uh, the federal government to, to allow him to come to, yeah. to Boston. How about Mark Emery from <laughs> British Columbia? I'm serious. Stick out of the side of the bar. Rob Patillo, you know. We could be working EMF radio, doing it from here on Herald Radio. Like, this is the stuff I'm talking about. Vermin Supreme. How about me and Frank? Frank and I. The That's right. Jerks. We'll use proper English and grammar. Dan, your, Dan Fishman. How about Farone? Yeah. How about Luke O'Neill? How about Oedipus? Like, where is that representation, that strong representation of the people, of the left even? It's just one. This is my problem with Harold Radio. It's just this one meme. It's just like, we hate immigrants. We hate immigrants. We hate immigrants. We hate immigrants. We hate the Val. We hate Obama. Well, I mean, Food stamps. So, Brad, now that I've set, gotten this out of my system. <laughs> wow. And said what I said. <laughs> now you respond. And said that I do respect Tom Shattuck. And I think uh, the man is accomplished. And, you know, I've even hit him up on, like, hey, dude, let's do something together. Like, you know, because that's where he's at. And and what do you got to say right now, Brad? Was alcohol involved? With me? Yeah. No. Okay. Was smoking involved? Well, I smoke all the time, but that makes me better. Okay. I, no, it's about, it's, <laughs> about, it's, about, it's about me pushing it. Like, I play a game. I do I always play a game. I always push people. And if they bite and respond, it's like, awesome. Now we can talk. We can have a real dialogue. Awesome. Let's do it. 
You're recognize them. You're coming to the table. That's right. And if you want to talk, give us I a deal call. with my I don't know, Chris Farone, five hundred. One of my best boys. We got in a fight the first time we actually had like interaction. Yeah, well, I mean, they, I mean, they say that the best way to start a fight online is express an opinion and wait and wait. Um, <laughs> you know, and that's all it takes. And and it's it's interesting because I mean, like my business partner, who is probably one of the funniest tweeters out there at JSL <laughs> Consulting. Um, I mean, he does analogy. Is his name? Analogy. Uh, John Larosa. Yes, he does I an know. analogy tweets. Yeah, he's um, very good. You know, it's like I mean, he, when when I was running for state rep, she he would talk about Rep Marty Walls. Yeah, she's you know Mar- Martha Coakley minus the charisma, <laughs> things like that. And <clears throat> he's kind of given up on sort of the the MA Poly stream. I do still try. You're to, good up there. You get some response. I yeah, check I mean, it out. Well, That's actually, John, stuff John and I, you know, the, in the Globe rankings, John and I are ranked one and two. Yeah. Or two and three among all political consultants on uh, Twitter influence. and I and I check that out. I and, mean, but I try, I try to engage with people. Like say okay, we need to end income inequality. Okay, I agree. But how about doing it this way? And then it's immediately oh you just want to give a you know tax giveaway to corporations or whatever. It's like no that's not what I said. So there are some people that you can have, um, and even when you disagree. You right. and I have that. Like we disagree all the time. We'll laugh about it. Sure. We'll we'll tweet each other back. Well, part of it, and that's what I liked about this. We know each other. Yeah. Offline, offline as well. Yeah. And even Tom Shattuck. I don't know him offline, but I know people who know him. I know people at the Herald, and I know people who he's who have worked with him, and I know about his reputation. And um, I like the guy, and I want to support him, and I want to support what they're doing. Herald Radio. I want to see it succeed. I just want to see it go a certain way. I'm a fan, and as a fan, I'm a critic, which you should want. And I really like how Tom Sh- uh, Shattuck responded. And then I had a nice response, and it was more, you know, even conciliatory, honoring him a little bit. And he re- he posted and replied back and liked it. So I think uh, that's the way it should be. Yeah, but and now as far as you know, as far as Herald Radio bringing on liberal commentators like for their own show yeah so much strong though like yeah, but i think now, people want br- strong people like like an alvin felchak like someone who's a populist like can, you you want to call me a liberal i'm not a liberal i'm not really a red mate could red you know i'm not really what you consider a herald radio conservative though mm-hmm. you know what i mean i'm more like a ron paul guy but maybe not even all the way with ron paul same with frank frank was a republican national de- like you know our friend chris ferron said call us political schizophrenics that's right we're about <laughs> issues not parties so much and we i like i work with a democrat like diane russell because we can work on things and be friends and some things we agree on and those are the things we work on we agree to disagree on other things Mm -hmm. and that's the way we kind of are and i think that's missing and i think half the population is with us it's not represented in the media half the population why we're getting so many listeners lately because they know we're the real deal we're mainstream we're also about the underground, but we're also about the institution. We're willing to work with the politicians. We love this. And uh, I love that Tom did that, actually. Yeah, I mean, dropping F-bombs around, maybe not the best way. I just hope he doesn't get in trouble for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think he I don't will. Think I don't think he, he has any boss like yeah. that. So no, I I love it. Well, He put friend. a star. He put a star, so he didn't actually say <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it was just F-U-C-K star. And G. So there you go. I so said, nobody understood what he meant. It, yeah. No, he censored himself. <laughs> but I should also add, Tom, does that mean you're not going to look at my resume and like... I think, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that he's not going to look at your resume. <laughs> Yeah. But no, to answer, well, we have enough answer, listeners, oh. you might have to. To answer your point, there. you know, I mean, I can see, I mean, I used to love Alan Combs and Sean Hannity yeah. together and having both sides. Um, I think, you know, I think Fox News is better on their discussion shows because they have a conservative that's what I'm saying. and a liberal. That's, a, that's what's missing. But having a liberal host on a Boston Herald that is yeah. editorially so far to the right, yeah. I'm not sure I'd go there. And then again, you can always say Air America and MSNBC. Yeah, but I'm also saying mm-hmm. not even someone that's like, it would be nice to have some liberal uh, tinge on there, but I'm also talking about the middle. Half the voters of Massachusetts are enrolled. They aren't Democrats. They aren't Republican. That's who's deciding this next election between, between Martha Coakley and Charlie Baker. Mm-hmm. It's people like me and Frank. Frank and I. Don't call I, I me a wanted, centrist. I wanted to be a, I, but we are in a lot of respects. Look at our friends in a lot of respects, Frank. Look, you know, and the thing is, like, 
I've want, I've thought about being a Democrat. I almost became a Republican with Ron Paul. I've wanted to be a Green. I've wanted to be a Libertarian. I want to be a Pirate Party. Like there's all these uh, the Pony Party, Vermont Supreme. Do you see where that is all unrepresented? I want to see that middle, the people who are unenrolled in Massachusetts. Let's have a voice for them. And we're seeing the market basket thing. They didn't want politics to get involved because they didn't want to be divided, Democrat Republican. And they won't, they don't want to get involved in unions because that would have divided them. They stayed as a family united, and I think that's what's missing. There's not name the one person how, what I kind of described that's representing that at, at Herald Radio. Hmm. Sorry, Tom, but I never listen. Yeah, uh. <laughs> I have, and there's not one person there. You know, I named some of the people you could you know bring up, but you need a couple. You know, you, you can't just have one show, one person, but. I want to see that. It's unrepresented. Do you, you hear what I'm saying, Frankie Capone? I'd like to see somebody that doesn't agree with anyone. You know, it just, just makes everybody, you know, it just has their own views on the world, you know, and, and that to me is more interesting than this kind of echo chamber kind of thing that goes on with, yeah. you know, it's basically like, all right, is it Coke or is it Pepsi? You know, do I do I want to listen to this version of the truth or do I listen to that version of the truth? Or do I, I would rather listen to somebody that just completely blows my mind with something I didn't even yeah. consider. And that's what we try to do here on this small level. Like, we, we're independent, we, you know, we try to do that on this small level. And I think we do that in some respects for some people. And uh, I think it's what's missing at Herald Radio. And I also think that there's a big opportunity for it. You just, uh, you, you kind of Went there, Brad, but then you kind of said, no, nah, I'm not so sure, sure because of that demographic thing, with specifically with Herald Radio. But I want to point out, like, you know, the Bill Maher thing. Like, he has a show. The reason why it's interesting is exactly what you said, because it's not just Bill Maher talking his liberal stand-up comedy. It's almost it's, interesting in spite of it's, Bill Maher. It's left and right. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. And all between, like third parties represented too. The alternative is right. everything is like that's the idea of that show and bring accomplished people together. And that's what I think is missing. And I just we we gone on and on. We way too long. Hopefully, uh, Tom Shattuck is cool with us now on Herald Radio, and maybe uh, maybe I will ease up on them. A little launching more. tweets at us right now. Yeah. But we, besides the good and bad news, I mean, uh, <laughs> Daisy Cutters. we could be talking about a lot of other stuff. And I think what we should do is take a quick break for music. We're going to play a little clip from Mayor, maybe. We're going to get uh, Rob Kaufman a uh, clip that we might come back with, uh, you know, from the break. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about that. It's political. It's about someone that, uh, what I'm representing, like, you know, maybe he's not ready for radio yet, yet but this is a young man. That would be an interesting radio host. And this is what I'm talking about. And he does, he's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. And uh, I want to hear what Brad thinks about this candidate after he hears him speak. He's not running in Massachusetts. He's running in California. But I think it translates anywhere. And I think that's what we're talking about today. And then we're going to get to some of the major issues of the campaigns that are running right now for the primary. We've got a big election coming up for governor of Massachusetts to figure out who's going to be on the ballot, Democrats and Republicans. Looking at uh, the Attorney General, we're looking at Treasurer, Secretary of State, we're looking at Lieutenant Governor, a lot of offices. We're going to get into it today, politics. You want to call into Market Basket, you're an employee, call in 617-500-7100. We are the Young Jerks on WEMF Radio. And we'll be right back. There it is. What do you got here? Tupac. This is Tupac. Yeah. This is Tupac. Here we go. Will be having its first ever mayoral election this fall in November. Joining us this morning is the youngest candidate on the ballot. His name is Alex Fidel. Good morning to you, Alex. Good morning. First of all, 22 years old, right? Mm -hmm. I got that right. Uh, some of your background is in journalism. Yeah, I'm an independent journalist. Um, founded when I was 18. I uh, really got to interview a lot of stellar people, some international dignitaries, like a former member of the Afghani parliament who had seven attempts on her life, mm -hmm. and a presidential candidate who got third place in 2012, and really got to learn about the world and about the way politics works, and um, that's why I'm running as an independent, not controlled by any banks, par political parties, or corporations. I'm fundamentally opposed to the two-party system, as well as California's top two primary system, so I'm very refreshed to offer voters a truly principled alternative to the lesser of two evils. All right, let's talk to those alternatives in Encinitas. What's on your mind? What do you think's on the minds of Encinitas? What, what are they there in Encin Encinitans? Um, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I like to view everybody as human beings. Right. And um, I, the main concern is, is budgetary things. We have exploding pensions, um, people who make over $100,000 a year, sometimes $200,000 a year mm -hmm. when Someone my age, uh, you know, 70% of us are coming home from college without any real job prospects. You're talking about they're getting that in pensions? Uh, no, no, in salaries. In salaries. Pensions okay. are even worse. Um, All right. 
we have overdevelopment and corporatism problems. Um, we have um, issues with civil liberties abuses and police brutality uh, against uh, young people, especially who don't know their rights. Do you see that in Encinitas, or are you just saying in general? Terms? Oh no, I see. Uh, coming from high school, I've seen kids who've gotten searched illegally without knowing their own rights, mm -hmm. and someone like me who has been educated knowing their rights. Um, uh, it's unfortunate to see that uh, there's no value of the Constitution or the Bill of Rights within the Sheriff's Department. All right, your platform, as you go around and see uh, uh, constituents, what are you expressing? What, what, what are you telling them? My platform is uh, peace, liberty, freedom, and equality. Um, the con uh, as an, uh, When you get elected, you take an oath to uphold the Constitution first and foremost. By that measure, every member of the City Council has broken their oath. Mm -hmm. um, my platform is to rein in the spending, um, to respect our civil liberties, um, as well as to be proactive on issues of injustice, because I refuse to be silent. We have the Tenth Amendment power of the Constitution to take on uh, unjust federal laws, um, uh, one of which is the war on drugs, mm -hmm. as well as legal tender laws, because even if we do get employed as young people, we're taking part in the slave dollar system, which is known as the Federal Reserve Note, uh, where half of our income taxes go to pay back interest on the debt owed to the bankers who print money out of nothing um, and charge an interest on it, which I feel usury is a bad thing. You talk about the war on drugs. I'm curious about your feel as far as marijuana goes in sure. the state of California. Well, I feel it should be completely legalized, um, although I feel that GMO seeds should be completely banned so that at least it's uh, not genetically modified. But the war on drugs is an abject failure. It's a system to benefit private prison industries. It ruins lives. Uh, drugs are illegal, but kids still get their hands on it, so it's not going to go away. It's just whether do you want the bad guys, the cartels who behead people south of the border to be in charge of it, or do you want the money to stay locally? And there are bad drugs like heroin and cocaine, but there are drugs that um, are misunderstood like cannabis and um, shamanic medicines and psychedelics. All right. The other candidates are Mike Bowani, Sheila Cameron, Kristen Gaspar, and Tony Kranz. Why should they vote for you and not them? Because I don't believe that you should rely on a politician to save you. I don't think that one person can save you. I think it's we the people rising up peacefully. Malcolm X said that revolution is not a spectator sport. Everyone participates. Thomas Jefferson said that when you fear the people, there's liberty. And I'd like to give you a, a quote, the late comedian Bill Hicks, on, uh, on what politics in America actually is. It's, okay. I think the guy on the right shares my beliefs. Well, I think the person on the left is more to my liking. Wait a minute. There's one person holding up both puppets. And oh, forget about the fact that the CIA killed Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Go back to bed, America. Your government loves you. Keep watching Love Connection and get fat and stupid, and that's what they want from us. So I really think that um, we need to kind of take the power back, and, and, it, and whether I get elected or not, if the people rise up, if 50 to 300 people show up at city council meetings, no matter which city you live in, mm -hmm. um, there, they will feel w -E -E -M -F radio. That was awesome. That uh, it, Alex Fidel, <laughs> Alex Fidel, he's running in uh, was it Encinitas, Encinitas, California, California which is part of us, uh, San Diego. My question for all the panelists: Would you vote for that? I would. For city council, absolutely. For mayor, for mayor. Oh, he's running for mayor. Oh, yeah. either one, either oh. office. Though. Okay, yeah. either office. But Even yeah. if it was in Massachusetts, <clears throat> would you vote for it? Yeah, I mean then. Yes. I'd vote for it. Oh, I'd even for support it. Yeah. In a heartbeat. I'd what about Rob Kaufman back then? Would you support it? I don't like the fact that he quoted Malcolm X and Bill Hicks. I do. I, I'm like, good, good. He got an Alex Jones in there, too. <laughs> Through Bill Hicks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, I don't agree with him on everything, of course. You know, and, you know, 99%, he might go a little too far, but way better than I love when he busts out the shamanic medicine. Yeah. <laughs> He's right on the mark and a lot of stuff. <laughs> and this is what's missing from... Our public debate in the media, and that's why I love Dick Boston, and I love the station, is that we get to throw that out there. I love the internet and uh, what we can do because we're doing that, and I encourage more people to do that. Any you know people out there, we have the great opportunity to do this. Rob does it on his show. Um, Mr. Marston over here does it. Frankie's doing it with me all the time. It's get loud, get vocal, talk about things. Create your own media because we're not being represented. Alex, uh, that viewpoint, what I was talking about, Harold Radio is, isn't looking at that. They they aren't representing it. They don't have any co-host that, that shares any of his opinions or beliefs. Right, Frankie? Well, most people in the mainstream think that that kid's a lunatic probably. Yeah, but he's not because half the population agrees with him. Well, because most of the stuff he said is actually true. <laughs> yeah, half the population well, agrees with him. I don't, they know, just don't, I don't, know, uh, if I don't know if that's true. It because, is. Look because at Because half, half the population aren't one one thousandths of him as informed about those positions as he is yeah and, but i don't agree i have I, I no think, idea what he's talking about I, I disagree i think a lot of people even if they're not um informed about every detail they feel it 
they know how the world works and, and just uh, um, from an experience level, they know how it works. They don't have to know every detail, but they they would feel someone like him would be interested in and in, you know they someone that they would trust and support and and i think the fact of it is when i say 50% of the population supports him what i'm really trying to say half the people don't vote half the people that do vote almost 50% of them are divided between two parties I don't even know what they're voting for. They're yep. just voting, oh, somebody told me to vote for this. There's okay. 5 or 10%, arguably, usually it's 1% or 2% that are like third party. Right? So even the people within the base of those two parties, there are supporters from those bases. And I think those are the, usually the more intelligent people within those bases in some respects, especially the activists, the younger people, the people on the Internet. They agree with Alex. And that's why I'm talking about the 50 percent, you know, because about half the people who don't vote are actually somewhat educated and even hooked in. And they understand they just feel like it's a waste of time. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Can, doing, you can't blame them in a way. No, you can't. I mean, uh, designed for them not a, to care. We're doing having, a, 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 an attorney general race in another state and we commissioned a poll. And we I mean, we knew who we were calling or who our polling firm was calling. And it was all unregistered voters. But they were asked their political affiliation, and the response was almost the exact breakdown of party affiliation, you know, of, of registered voters. So, you know, even though we knew they weren't 10 percent self-identified as Republicans, 32 percent self-identified as Democrats, and then the rest actually realized they aren't registered in, with either party. There you go. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean. And this is the reality I have to uh, focus on. I mean, I look at the marijuana thing. That's a perfect example. There was some uh, definitely institutional support from uh, voters in those parties, but there wasn't any elected officials supporting any of these marijuana causes. It was the voters who decided it. And uh, and that's what we're, you know, in a lot of cases about the people, the voters. And that's what I think is not represented. But I want to get beyond that because there's a campaign going on. And there's yeah, a lot of other of stuff we want to get into. A bunch of primaries. Yeah. So. I'm going to ask one, and then I'm going to let Frank Frank go and go and go. And um, Let me add him. Yeah, let me add him. I, we have Brad Marston here. He's a political consultant. He's a Republican in Massachusetts. He's from Boston. Live, you still live in Boston, right? Yep. Okay. Um, this campaign for governor, I'm going to ask you a bunch of candidates. The number one one I want to open about, but we want to open about, is Evan Felchuk. Are you aware of him? Yes, I am. I uh, actually visited his website today, kind of in preparation. Um, and, you know, whereas a lot of the Democrats say we need to invest in this, we need to invest in that, we need to invest in this. And Evan talks about we need to reallocate funds to address these concerns, uh, which I really liked. I also like the fact that I think he, he recognizes he's not going to win, but... He has a broader, longer-term goal of getting the United Independent Party that I think probably reflects your guys' values um, pretty well. Get that as an official party, and I think they need to get three percent of that vote. Correct. So, um, you know, I, I watched a couple of his videos, um, uh, read his positions. I, I think he's an impressive guy. Me too, and I don't agree with him on everything, but I agree with him a lot. I love how he's open about it, how he published it all. You see it so rarely now. The candidates will talk about five or six top issues that they're based all agree on, but they never go into these other issues where he really lays it out. Uh, he even gets into the different ways he supports uh, drug reform, not just marijuana. He, t he really lays it out, like, on every case. Like, you know, immigration, he just doesn't talk about one hot topic. He goes, this is what it really means. This is a follow-up. This is – he's really good. Check out his website. But what I liked recently is that he went after Jeff McCormick, mm -hmm. who's running as an independent as well, uh, who's a little more right. Probably going to take some votes away from Charlie Baker, maybe. I don't think so that much because I don't think he's doing that well. But they had a debate, and Evan went after McCormick and said, you know, basically you're playing up a racist immigration policy for politics the way your posts are on Facebook, and you talk about Facebook, 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 how, how many likes you got on Facebook, how popular it is. And it's basically racism, and it's racism for clicks and votes and likes on Facebook. And it's not really dealing with the issues like Evan has been. And it's not really addressing the bigger issues. It's just cheap clicks. Well, I I haven't seen those posts, so I don't know what he linked to. Okay. And is there some 
element of nativism and racism in anti immigrant illegal immigration yes but because simply because you are against illegal immigration does not de facto and co- define I, you as a racist yeah and i got to say that evan said that uh, no basically he said uh, jeff i'm not saying you're a racist i'm saying that your campaigning is somewhat playing into some people who are racist yeah, what, what and you know people and, forget is yeah, that and the big 40% thing he, of the people here illegally yeah. came here legally a lot from Europe, Eastern Europe, et cetera, et cetera, and overstayed their visa. So our problem with illegal immigration is not just people coming across our southern border. True. Oh, it's what do we do that. about these things, though? That's the you know bigger issue. I think that uh, Evan had a point on this because it was like you know they're they're playing into a certain demographic, and it's just based on you know it's based on a lot of hate and a lot of respects. It's not being honest. That was the big thing he was calling them. He said you weren't being honest about a lot of the facts, which is true. A lot, you know, a lot of the facts we didn't know, and then we found out what the true facts were with this amnesty program and who's coming here. You know, with the governor and Obama and all that crap. And there's still a lot we don't know how it's going to work out, but. It's not like as cut and dry as what people were saying, and and he's like, you're not being honest about it, which I I liked it, I really did. I like, I think Alvin Falchuk, there's something there. This guy's got some money, he's got some intelligence, he's doing well. I think he's gonna get the three percent. I think he might even do a little better. I think he actually, it's a one in a hundred long shot, but this dude actually could pull off a miracle. <laughs> it's like the 1980, you know, Stay U.S. In radio, dude. hockey. <laughs> no, it's like, you know, I or call it what more. it is. No, I, no, I'm serious. Like, you know, 1980, no one would have predicted the United States would win that Olympic gold medal in hockey. You know, uh, no one. You yes, know, but thought, they both had the same number of players on the field and the same equipment. Yeah, you got a point there. Yeah. But still, you know what I'm saying? Ice. I'm just saying. Just, like, God, I almost had a Martha Coakley you know, moment. With. You know, and sometimes my job is to be a little more optimistic because that's who I am. I'm mm-hmm. trying to hype it up, you know, because I want people to realize not a lot of good candidates out there. We always complain about it. But when we get them, even if you're not going to vote for this guy, even if you're a Republican, I saw Dan Fishman, a libertarian, talking about Evan. You know, he's supporting Evan in some ways, posting his stuff, talking about the issues. It's like when we get these good candidates to vote for you, you know, it's not just voting. You can support them. We need to look at this. We need to talk it up. And uh, I like Evan. I got to admit it. And, and maybe it's foolish for me to, you know, maybe I'll just stick to radio about it. But <laughs> I'm going to say I never bet against him because I, I think he's he's doing very well right now. That's That's something Spanish I think is, community is loving him. Oh, of course. That's something I think is interesting about he speaks fu- fusion voting. You know, there's sometimes, you know, about that, Brad, the system they have in some places where everybody's on the same ballot and, like, you can pick, you know, a person from. So you don't just say, oh, I want a Democrat better. You can vote for two or three people. Yeah, you can vote. They do this for, in Cambridge, but, representational yeah. voting. I, yeah. When I vote for city council, for instance, in different offices in Cambridge, I vote one, two, three, four. I rate them, which is awesome. I mm-hmm. really like that. Because sometimes I got two. Is that sort of like the, the, yeah. the automatic um, runoff, runoff kind of automatic thing? Runoff. Yeah, kind of a little bit like that. Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. See, if I was voting for city council in. Cambridge, I actually wouldn't be voting for representation since nobody on the Cambridge City Council represents my views. Uh, I don't know about that. There's a couple of people that run there a little more conservative, Brad. Okay. They might not be, uh, you know. But I, th- I, I, I okay. just came back to Evan for a second. Yes. And I think it's important that, I mean, yes, I would love him, love to have somebody with that kind of energy and those kind of ideas in the Republican Party because I think to attract young people, we need the Republican Party needs to move more libertarian. That's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. so why well, actually now that we brought that up, Brad, why do you think there's such like a pushback from like the let's call it the old guard or the establishment Republicans against the whole libertarian wing of the party? And that's a lot of what I'm saying about the Herald like, thing we were talking about earlier, too, in a lot of respects. Well, you know? it, same libertarians issue. are for much smaller government. Yeah. Which, if you have much smaller government, you have much less money going to Washington, and they have much less power. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's just that's just one. Yeah. Um, I mean, in some ways, I am very libertarian. I'm just more pr- pragmatic about it. I don't want to see people get hurt. There are social services people rely on. Sure. In a unique, in a, sure. in a utopian world, we would have never had all these all programs. Right, in a utopian world, I'm an anarchist, but I mean, I, but, you know, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's not, what we talk about, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, the real world versus what we would love to see yeah. and what we can make happen. And, uh, but no, I'm saying, very like, interesting take discussion the state party. I love it. You know what I mean? Take the state party, just our own Massachusetts state party, yes. in my experience, being, you know, a libertarian. 
libertarian and trying to work know, in take that part in the GOP, process mass GOP. With the GOP, you know, through the, the they whole try to kick Frankie and out of the convention you know? and mm-hmm. his friends. Well, they yeah, no, I mean, they ended up away. kicking. We, we won. You went, but we won. But the thing was, is we won, you know, per the rules of that day, we won a lion's share of the seats. I think um, there was 20, we needed to win 22 of them. With the provisional ballots, we would have won like 24 already. But they tried their damnedest and pulled every dirty trick in the book to keep us out of the out of the conversation. Well, I think they were they were afraid of having a bunch of Ron Paul people vote for Ron Paul instead of Mitt Romney s- sitting in the front section of the national nominating convention. Now, do I think that is a right thing to think or do? No, but I'm saying that's what their thinking yeah. was um you know i was i was at a nominating convention i didn't run to be a delegate uh, and a buddy of mine came up and said hey would you support this ticket and i actually knew a couple of guys on it so i did vote you know i did vote for two of them but boy for people who are supposed to be good in math it certainly take seems to take the republican party a lot of time to count things <laughs> yeah yeah we could get into that with Vet, jeff fisher being on the ballot why don't we talk more Mark, about that yeah. we don't have much time left we got a few That's more true. issues oh, we wow, want to get to um, um, okay so charlie baker jeff fisher yeah. uh martha coakley what are your opinions on these campaigns who do you like who don't you like give us some good stuff here okay mr brad Marston. i like fisher but the only surprise is just by how much he's going to lose by yeah <laughs> true you know, if it's 70 80 though it is a small it is a small um it's going to be a low turnout election uh he has some a lot of dedicated supporters so he could bump up, up his numbers but there's no question uh charlie's gonna win any. um i like the trend for charlie um the latest globe poll showed him up by one point that's Finally. inside the mar- margin yeah. of error but a it's the same polling firm and he's gone from 15 to, to 12 yeah. to, you know, and I think it's just a case of the more you get to know Martha Coakley, the, the less you like her. Yeah. Do um, you, know, you think that might happen at Charlie again? Because, like, no, I we don't. are two months out. Or, you know, it's a way away from the general. Mm-hmm. I think that, I mean, the Massachusetts election laws are basically the Incumbent Protection Act. Sure. You know, move, yeah. move it back as far as possible. Biggest name always okay. wins. You know. Now, I think with Coakley, that could help her because she is such a bad campaigner. If she only has six weeks to screw up after the uh, primary, she's you know, kind of reducing her... Um, you know, reducing her chance of, uh, of damaging her own campaign. Well, who do you think will win, Coakley or Baker? Head to head right now. <laughs> If it was head to head and we didn't have Evan and we didn't have uh, with Jeff all McCormick, of them, with all of them there until the end, I am cautiously optimistic that Baker's going to take it because we tried the vision thing for the last eight years, and I think right now, I mean, we were talking earlier. I mean, think off air. Why hasn't Berwick taken off, et cetera, et cetera? I think he's people not are, vocal enough. I people, don't think he's taking it to him. But people are looking uh-huh. for less vision and more management. Yep. Fix the DCF. Fix the Department of Transportation. And more passion for it. To really go out there and go and after it. And that's what Charlie loves Not to do. Not just on one or two issues, on all the issues, on many issues, on many fronts. You know, like, that's what Evan's doing. Um, let me ask you another question. How, how good do you, uh, like, percentage-wise, do you think Evan will get to the 3%? Or is it good? Uh, I haven't seen any polling, but, yeah. I mean, it'd probably be better if he had a few more bucks in the bank. He's but, got some uh, good money. Well, he has his own money. Yeah. But, so, I mean, on the, good, on, the, on the lieutenant governor race, um, I, if I was a Democratic lieutenant governor candidate, I would change my name to don't know right now. <laughs> I'm voting for Lou Dan Chung. He's uh, come on the show. We like him because okay. he's come on. He's cool with us. I mean, and he, and he works with me. He's a city councilor that I know that he always answers my call and often for smaller government. He's, he's a fiscal conservative, socially liberal. That's what I like. He's my kind of guy. There you go. A Democrat. He used to be a Republican, Not actually, so too. So that's so much. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's a good ahead. question I want to ask you, Brad. You know, like, it seems more and more lately that, like, there's this kind of, like, sinking ship going on with the Republican Party. You know? Like, what's keeping you around? You know, oh, what's keeping do you me just enjoy the, the music on the deck as the, as the <laughs> ship is sinking? Or no, like, it's 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 wanting to make a difference. Yeah, um, is, is there an opportunity for, in that too? Because I think, it's kind of. Yeah. I think there is. Um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it was it was funny when we were electing um, our uh, Chris, Kirsten Hughes running against Rick Green, and there was a debate, and I walked 
in and everybody was like coming up to me was like well how are you going to vote how are you going to vote i said i'm not i'm not a republican state committeeman yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but everybody just sort of assumed i was mm-hmm. um so i think you know behind the scenes i have a voice with the party and when people go nuts um you know there's there's the mayra wing you know just solid anti-abortion anti-gay you know and <sighs> Okay, you got to throw them a bone occasionally, yeah. but that brand doesn't work in Massachusetts. No, and it's, it and it's, doesn't and work for it, humanity. In, in my case, you know, I don't agree with that position. Yeah. You know, I mean, as I, I had this conversation with uh, a gay Republican friend of mine, and I said, well, gays have always had the right to marry. It's just we're starting to finally stop using government power to, to keep them it. from exercising that right. So, and uh, granted, Mary is a charged word. No, but I think, you're right, I think everybody should have civil unions. I, I, like that. I like that kind of thinking, though, because, you know? like, I agree. Like, we all have a right to have a human right. Like, you could, you could uh, incorporate two people, even without being married. Well, that's you could also have vows, vows that are uh, your own contract. Like, you know, I take vows to my girlfriend right now. I consider us married. We're going to get married officially into the eyes of the law and the government eventually. We already talked about it for a long time. But uh, I look at it as we are. Well, yeah. We kind of had that vow to each other. And, and we no renewed law, it. I, right? You know, as a man, you know, sometimes you can be an idiot. I was an idiot for a little while, and well, I renewed hey, it. Course, and I love I mean, this woman. You know? And she's coming up next, so we're going to have to get going. That's true. It's uh, Kamalita coming up. Smoking in the girls' room. Yeah, the big show. <laughs> Rob Coffin's doing it. He's the man. Rob, you, what, what's going on? Um, actually, before I bring out Ron Kaufman, we do have to say goodbye to our guests, and we really thank you for coming in today. Oh, it's my, my pleasure. Brad Marston. I'm actually going to a big fundraiser for a Republican candidate at uh, Ron Kaufman's uh, condo. Oh, Ooh, tell him I time. said hi. Yeah. Tell Dif- Ron. Different, Ka- different Ron Kaufman. Tell oh, Ron, oh, tell oh, Ron really? Kaufman I said one? hello. I was going to say, you know these big wigs. Bring them down on the show. Well, have a drink maybe with them or something. I don't know. What do we awesome. do with the Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. I had fun today. And tell us where people can find out more about you. And uh, I'm on Twitter at, at Brad Marston. Uh, my company is Four Tier Strategies, fourtierstrategies.com. We don't do just political websites or political digital strategy. Right now we're working on uh, a new website for a homeless shelter down in New London, which is just a lot of fun. Awesome. And, uh, it looks really great, too. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you. You're, you're a good man. I, I love you on Twitter. I follow you on Twitter, and I tell all my friends, check out Brad Marston. Well, thank you very much. We are the Young Jerks. We are on EMF Radio. We're going to wrap it up this week. Thank you so much, Mass Can Normal, the community, all our listeners, all our callers over the last week's uh, the market basket employees. Dan, the man couldn't call in because you know why, Frank? He's, He's working. working. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why our market basket employees weren't calling today, even though they wanted to. They're sending us messages. They're restocking the shelves, making sure we can get back to shopping. So very exciting and going to be a lot more news, politics, things going on. We didn't even talk. Me and uh, you know Frankie and I, we got the big freedom rally coming up, as yep. we talked about. Yep. We also have a cannabis Recent expo. Country. It's called Canacon. Oh, yeah, that I'm working Canacon. on with Dig Boston. Can't wait for the Big part of that coming up in January. We got some major things. And I'm not just saying, like, we're going to be a part of it. We're like... We're the focus. Doing it. We're like Doing the. It. We're 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 leading shit. Like we've been leading for a long time, but now things are getting official. Money behind us, <laughs> and there's a lot more happening. Smoking in the girls' room. All these A plus women are coming up next. Look at this crew. Wow. And they got my dog here. Wow. Look at that crew, Frankie. They, they look beautiful. You joined the wrong show. Intel- yes, you, you did. did. <laughs> You've got to talk to them on the way out because give them your card. Them good networking connections. You got any cards, any business stuff, put them on the table, on our promotion table, Brad. Thank you again for coming in. We are the Young Jerks. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Kaufman. Thank you.